Yeah, 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 what's the deal, what's the deal, it's your boy, who is in the, and we back talking sports, shout out to uh, my big bro too, uh, um, he made a fire video today, and, uh, um, yeah, you know what time it is, um, you know I'm a Kobe fan, a huge Kobe fan, probably one of the biggest Kobe fans you know, Maybe outside of Dreamers Pro, me, Dreamers Pro, you know, probably two of the biggest Kobe fans that's um, making content. But, um, you know, it's a lot of things they want to tell you about Kobe's career. And in the last 10 years, they have tried not only just try but brainwash some people into thinking that Kobe was carried Kobe <laughs> LeBron James is better than Kobe is LeBron versus I mean yes yeah, LeBron versus Jordan when that was never the case you got people saying that Bird better than Kobe you got dumb niggas saying that Steph Curry better than Kobe. You got dumb niggas saying that Kobe not even top 10. Or well, when Kobe was here, that was never a debate. Never for NBA uh, for NBA players or fans. When Kobe was playing, young Kobe in his prime, even up to 2013, there was never a question. But you know, over time, when people can't defend themselves, and the, the more and more you don't play, you get the media who didn't like Kobe at all anyways, after the Colorado shit. When the turn down, aka the machine. So, shout out to my boy to, uh, you know, let's get it, bro. Outright lies. In order... To prop up LeBron Ramon James. This is not an attack on LeBron James necessarily. This is more of an attack on the machine that is out there that is trying to diminish the legacies of players who pose a threat to the supposed supremacy of LeBron James in their eyes. Not to mention, they also have an insidious agenda to <laughs> diminish the impacts of players that helped LeBron James along the way. It's disgusting. It's not they love to do that. LeBron carried all bombs. He never had a super team. Kobe had super teams. Got carried by Shaq. Got carried by Powell. You know one thing they can't say though. He ain't had no competition. They like to bring that up when he got to the finals. But Kobe played tougher competition than anybody. Anybody. It's narcissistic. It's sadistic. And just plain wrong. So first of all, unless you were old enough to know this, because you have people who are giving out misinformation like Clutch Sports client and LeBron James buddy buddy Draymond Green, who will tell you that LeBron was considered the best player in the NBA from 05 until now, which is which is straight bullshit. How was he considered the best player in 05 when he didn't even make the playoffs? And Tim Duncan won the championship. How? How can you be considered the best player in the world when you didn't even make the playoffs? The 
this is the disrespect that people give to Kobe. You got people like Nick Wright say he was never the best player in the world. Nick Wright, you go on TV and you're literally talking to people who never seen Kobe play in his heyday. People who say, oh, y'all only put Kobe top five because he died. It's the most ignorant lie I've ever heard, bro. The most ignorant lie. Because it's tons of video out here showing you people picking Kobe over LeBron. Or people picking Kobe over Bird or whatever. Before he was dead. Before he retired. Before he tore his Achilles. Before he even got into prime Kobe. Just stop it, bro. This is poppycock. That's not true at all. From 2005 to 2011, at the very least, Kobe Bryant was considered the best player in the NBA, mm -hmm. as well as the best Olympian. I would stress that it may have it, was, it may have stretched out even until 2013, around the time of that uh, Achilles injury. From 2004 to 2013, the Western Conference, there were 30 50-win teams and 9 60-win teams in that time period. Think about that. It was 30 50-win teams and 9 60-win teams. From 2004... To 2000, what do you say, 13? Think about that, bro. From 2008 to 2010, Kobe appeared in the finals three straight years, losing the first final against three top 75 players. And during that time, Kobe averaged 28, 6, and 6. And in the finals during that stretch, he averaged 29, 6, and 6 on a 57% true, true shooting percentage. I got, I'll got go by true shooting percentage now, not field goal. Because y'all like, like to use the field goal uh, percentage, Kobe field goal percentage of 44%, and act like, and act like uh, the era he played in. Like, really, no guards or no point guards is really shooting over 50% like that. The pace was slower. You literally had a half-court game most of the game, bro. So, I used true shooting percentage or used my stat where Kobe, Kobe from 96 to 2013, when he tore his Achilles, was 2% over, 2% over the uh, the league average of shooting of shooting percentage, only to beat those same three top seventy five players on his back to back championships with one Hall of Fame player. In the and Loki beat four Hall of Famers because Ray John Rondo is a Hall of Famer. Period. Loki beat four All Stars. With just one. Yeah. Yeah. And to me, in my opinion, that was tougher than what uh that was tougher than what most people did. Except for what maybe Dirk. Cause Dirk barely even had a second star. But I think that was tougher than what LeBron did in twenty sixteen. I mean, it's easy to come back when you got a, uh, a Kyrie uh, averaging 29 points per game in the finals with you. You got Kevin Love over there, an all-star. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was more even than you really think it is, bro, in that Cleveland series. 2016 to 2017 is more even, especially 2017. Kobe won a series, bro, in 2008, where Paul Gasol averaged, I think, 12 points 
and somebody else averaged 13 points. And he still whooped the fuck out of them. Y'all let me know what series that was where Kobe averaged 29 and Paul Gasol averaged 12 points. I can't remember what series it was. I want to say it was the 08, um, the 08 West Finals where they still swept them. Or gentlemen swept them. Let's keep it going. In those three straight finals from 2008 to 2010, Kobe beat 10 50 win teams. In comparison, it took LeBron until his eighth finals run in 2017 for him to beat an aggregate total of 10 50 win teams. It took LeBron eight finals to equal what Kobe did as far as competition in three. And that's all you need to know, bro. These are just some of the reasons why when people say LeBron is better than Kobe, I laugh. I laugh now. I'm not arguing with people no more. It's people that come in the comment section. Kobe not even top five. Man, if you don't get out of my comment section, go watch the videos I got. Go watch the go watch the videos I got of real Kobe stats. Real Kobe video. Real Kobe people. NBA people. Telling you that Kobe is top five. Telling you that Kobe is the closest thing to Mike. See, they don't like that. They don't like that Kobe was so close to Mike and basically embodied everything that he exuded. Mike cried when he died, bro. You think he going to cry and be at uh, LeBron James' funeral? Whenever that does happen? I'm not saying he won't be there, but it won't be the same effect because Kobe and Mike was the same being. They was the same dude. Bean and MJ, they was the same guy, bro. You know what the real difference was? And I'm going to be real. Jordan, he took better shots. Jordan was a tad bit better defender. But I think it was, I don't care what nobody say. I understand defensive player of the year. I understand this and that. But Kobe had to guard better players. And when I say better player, I'm talking about his peers. You're not going to sit here and tell me that MJ's shooting guard peers and Kobe's shooting guard peers, MJ's are better. Because they're not. Kobe, better skills to me. More skilled. Scoring is tied. I'm going to be honest. To me. Competition, I'm going with Kobe. As an overall player, though, it's still Mike because of the resume and just because he was just different, bro. He was just different. But like I said, I always will say this. Kobe played tougher competition. He played in the toughest era in NBA history, the lowest, the, one of the lowest scoring eras in NBA history, and played in literally probably the toughest conference in NBA history and still put up Jordan-like numbers. You know who never could do that and never did that, but I'm not saying his name on this channel anymore. Paul Gasol, before arriving to the Lakers in 2008, had only made an all-star team one time and zero all-NBA teams. And from 2005 to 2008, not one player besides Kobe made an all-star team on the Lakers. By comparison, from 2008 to 2010, LeBron had two all-star teammates, but they're always talking about he had no help. No, Kobe had no help, but he didn't fucking complain, and neither did his fans. We didn't complain about that shit, nigga. We rolled with Kobe, and he always came out on top. Even at the end of his career, nobody is going to have a 60-point game going out in the NBA. Not even LeBron don't have a 60 point game on his last game. And I can guarantee you that. Because he don't even score 60. 
Jordan didn't even have a 60 point game when he went out. Kobe was a different dude. That Mamba mentality was different, bro. Yes, they gave him all the shots. So the fuck what? He still had to make them shots, bro. And brought them back to win the game, bro. I'm telling you, Kobe was so different, bro. And the disrespect to Kobe is wild. Crazy, bro. Shit is wild, bro. Like, on some real shit, bro. Dog, y'all, bro. Doggy Bomb, bro, was different, man. Like, I'm telling you, dog. People like Chris Broussard are frying up his face and call us. Fuck Chris Broussard, man. Did you know that if you are watching this, you are eligible to receive a $1,400 a month health card? Plus, LeBron haters by stating the facts. So one thing that they love to say is, well, if Kobe was the best player, then why does he only have one MVP? Because of the media. Kobe has finished in the top five of MVPs 11 times. 11. But he only has one MVP. And the MVP he won wasn't even one of his top five seasons, bro. I can argue 01 Kobe, 06 Kobe, 07 Kobe, 09 Kobe, and 03 Kobe was better. So it's like, bro, they did that and it pissed me off because they was like, okay, here, here go your MVP. And 09 Kobe was better than 08 Kobe. Well, from 2004 to 2013, Kobe put up 28 points per game, 5 rebounds, 5 assists, despite the fact that people have this notion that he didn't pass the ball. That's fucking ridiculous. If he didn't pass the ball, why in the uh, in the 3 P? why was he always the one initiating uh, Shaq into the offense? They really didn't have no point guard. Go watch those 2003 P Laker teams. What about 01 where Cody averaged 30 and 7 rebounds? I mean, 35 rebounds and 7 assists. He always literally led them in assists and was first or second in points. Not to mention the best defender on the team. So what the hell are we talking about? Y'all want to use MVPs and finals MVPs when it's convenient for y'all. Because this certain fan base, when you start talking about Kareem... And, and, and his MVPs or you start talking about the GOAT and his finals MVPs and MVPs then it's you know what I'm saying it's diluted when they have more all the defensive teams in the player they start talking about that until you talk about Kobe 12 all defensive teams then it's oh it was popularity it was this it was that they only talk about finals competition but what they don't talk about is playoff competition and, and number one thing they don't like to talk about is winning. This certain fan base don't like to talk about winning. These new NBA cats nowadays, bro, they only care about stats and style points. They don't care about winning. I say Dane, Giannis, Steph, and the Warriors, they care about winning. Them the only motherfuckers that I see that really care about winning. And not all that extra junk, bro. Not the... Oh, it's all gotta be about stats. That's what the new NBA fan really cares about. Or this certain NBA fan that I won't mention a fan base or whatever like that. Since you can't be the GOAT with the winning, and damn sure not skill... Try to overload with stats and overload with analytics and all of this. But genuine love and genuine people who think you're the GOAT, it does not fucking matter. An average 1.4 steals per game. From 2008 2010, three straight seasons, Kobe was first place in the West 
that had over 10, 50 win teams. Why didn't he win MVP if it was all about winning? Because when Kobe was putting up 30 points per game, the critics said that Kobe's teams weren't winning. It had a lot to do with <laughs> politics. Thank you. I'm not going to go too far into this, but we know what happened. Yep. Kobe. We know what happened. In 2003, 2004. We yep. know the allegations. We know what that was all about. Listen, this is my theory. This may be a crazy ass theory. I'm sorry for my Jordan fans, but I'm sorry. This is my theory, and it's the way I'm. This the way I'm gonna do it. I think they didn't want Kobe to pass Jordan in titles. I really think that, bro. I think they sabotaged Kobe from trying to get Chris Paul because they didn't want him to pass him in titles, bro. I believe they only gave Kobe one MVP because they don't they didn't want him to pass Jordan and they didn't like that he was winning without Shaq that's what I believe bro I may be far off but from what I seen during that time with my own two eyes Kobe was always made to seem as the bad guy in 07 when he wanted to get traded after carrying their ass to the playoffs two straight years he was the bad guy what has he done without Shaq and everything what did Shaq do without Kobe before Kobe uh, became a starter go look it up what did Kobe do without Sha what did Shaq do without Kobe period even afterwards he won one title got swept the next year by Chicago and then didn't do shit else So you're not going to tell me that Shaq better than Kobe. I don't care about those three MVP, finals MVPs. When you're facing Ty McCullough, uh, Matumbo, and Rick Smith. Really? Mat you like 200 pounds more than Matumbo. Rick Smith is the only one that really gave you a problem because he could shoot from the outside. But even still, couldn't do anything with you. Now nah, versus them Spurs and them, them Kings teams and stuff. He used to be struggling. He averaged with like 21 points per game versus uh, the Spurs one year. Or I think shit like that. And Kobe averaged 26. And let's not get to talking about when they was down 15 in game 7. When Kobe, this was young, young Kobe. When he was truly a number 2. Y'all know what happened. Kobe led them in points, rebounds, assists, and blocks. In Game 7, 2000s, the game before they went to the finals. If Kobe don't turn up and drop 22 in the second half, they losing that game. Him and Brian Shaw. Brian Shaw hit a couple threes that was very, very key. But if Kobe don't turn up and basically take over the number one, they lose, bro. Allegations tarnished Kobe Bryant's reputation. Yep. And the public's perception of him plummeted. After the criminal case, the NBA didn't want Kobe being a face of the league and winning MVP. Nope. Not to mention the fact that around that time period, you also had the malice at the palace. Okay? So. I'm not knocking Steve Nash, but there was a perception. I am. Um, I don't give a fuck. He didn't deserve the MVP. Kobe deserved the MVP, and I will never get over that. Ever. Ever. I don't give a damn. I mean, get over it. It was 20 years ago. I don't give a damn, because that was a travesty. Straight travesty. Only thing worse than that, for me... Is when Steph didn't win MVP. I mean, Ste Steph didn't win Finals MVP in 2015. That's why I don't care about that shit no more, bro. Because they can't control that shit. The media vote on that shit. They don't like you. Okay, nah. How can you vote a player who averaged 16 points per game 
as the finals MVP, even though even though he did great defense, he put up great defense on LeBron. LeBron still averaged 39, 13, and 6. Or 36, 13, and 6. He just had a low shooting percentage. But there was no way in hell Steph shouldn't have won that finals MVP. That was pure hate. Pure hate by LeBron James and the media that year. The media voted on that. And they had LeBron James as the finals MVP, even though he lost. He outplayed them. I, I give him that. But not in those last three games, because they was up 2-1. Steph Curry outplayed everybody. He averaged 37 points per game in the last three games, bro. And averaged 26. That year, he was 26 points per game, 26-6-6. and six. That's ridiculous. That's why finals MVP, I don't give a fuck about that no more, because they're going to vote who they want to vote for. Just like the Eastern Conference Finals MVP last year, I thought Caleb Caleb uh, Martin should have won. But that's not that don't have nothing to do with this. But yeah, shouldn't or or Dirk Nowitzki. But there was a there was a perception that the league was becoming too guttural, too thuggish. All right, you heard these words thrown around. So while Steve Nash and Dirk Nowitzki were credible MVP candidates, a lot of people think that David Stern and the NBA softening the game, making it more about shooting and fundamentals, you know, at that time, hey, those types of players tend to be more European, therefore more you know what mm -hmm. so that would feature a different type of player they wanted to change the image of the league remember rap music cornrows tattoos were being featured prominently in NBA games and the NBA was starting to le lose a certain particular fan base mm -hmm. and who is that due to AI AI changed the culture of the NBA bro Real talk, bro. I, that's why I love AI. Kobe changed the co change. He changed the mental aspect. You feel me? People wanted to learn the mama mentality, bro. They wanted to learn that. They wanted to move like Kobe. They wanted to shoot like Kobe. I know y'all. I know y'all who was born in the '90s and grew up. You know, even born in the you know what I'm saying the late '80s and stuff like that. I grew up in the '90s. I know my my uh, millennials remember this for sure, for sure, and uh, the baby uh, and the baby boomers on that. Kobe shooting the paper ball in the basket, bro. Come on, bro. What are we talking about, man? So Kobe was the victim of this. I think anybody that looks back at the two thousand five, two thousand six. Is crazy, bro. I think we're in an Airheads commercial. Huh? Want to skip it? The 60s. Now, I admit it, Kobe didn't have a down 2004-2005. But anybody will tell you 2005-2006, Kobe should have won MVP. It's ridiculous. The fact that team won 45 games without another all-star on that team. And Kobe probably responsible for more than half of those victories. Mm -hmm. He should have won MVP then. You can 45 games with Smush Parker, Luke Walton, Kwame Brown, Shannon Brown, fucking uh, Slava Medvedenko, Sasha Vujicic, Chris Mim. That's who he had on his team, bro. That's who he carried to the finals. And y'all want to compare that to. The LeBron team that he had. He had Larry Hughes, who uh, was a 20 point per game scorer and an all star. He had Mo Williams, who was an all star. He had Big Z, who was an all star before. Come on, bro. Kobe literally was. Literally was carrying role players. I'm not even gonna call them bombs because they helped Kobe. Get to the they helped Kobe at least on the defense. 
They didn't do shit on offense, but they at least probably helped them on the defensive end. Get to 45 games. Win 45 games, bro. In the Western Conference in the mid-2000s. Because of that man. Averaging 35 fucking points. Stop it, bro. When I seen that 81 point game, and I seen them come from 20 down to winning the game, and he put up 55 points in one half, I said, this is the greatest scoring performance I've ever seen in my life. He was, that would made me think that Kobe is the greatest scorer of all time. I love Jordan. I understand that most people are going to disagree with me, but due to competition and due to the, uh, the style of playing, the amount of great defenders he had to go up against, top 10 defenses, 50 win teams, I got Kobe as the greatest scorer, bro. You can make a great case he should have won MVP in 2007, but they gave it to Dirk Nowitzki because his team won 67 games. And I always said that Kobe should have won back-to-back MVP, bro. To me, Kobe should have four MVPs. Easy. Easy. 03, 06. Uh, I said 03, 06, 07. I, I give him at least three. At least three MVPs. I give him at least three. Games, despite the only other All-Star on the team being Josh Howard, but if I'm not mistaken, I don't think Kobe had another All-Star on that team in 2007. So when Kobe started winning, it was no longer about winning. Nope. It was about putting up numbers. A la LeBron James. So the narrative had changed conveniently. But Kobe through his sheer will, through his play, and gutting it out in championships, forced the NBA forced to recognize them. his greatness. Yep. Forced them. Forced them. They was not trying to hear what Kobe was talking about, bro. He forced them to. He f- listen. Two Ross understating it. He really forced them. Be like, hold on, dog. Y'all not finna disrespect me, bro. He just kept winning and kept going to the finals and kept going to the finals and kept going to the finals. They couldn't take it. They had no choice but to give Kobe that damn respect. So by 2008, I believe it was, they had no choice but to give Kobe at least one MVP because no other player had, uh, had, had, had executed and displayed the skill set that Kobe had perhaps other than Michael Jordan. They had to give it to him. By 2010, Kobe was considered the greatest player in the game. On social media, there was even debate that he could become greater than Michael Jordan. Because remember, Kobe was still only 31 years old when he won his fifth title. By comparison, 31. Jordan was 35 when he won his six. The media, and even Shannon, okay, Skip Sharp even said that Kobe was number three all time. And the Jordan versus Kobe debate began on social media. Yes, it did. And I was part of it. I was part of it. I was on the Kobe spectrum. Back then, I was a good 18. Yeah, I was a good 18 back then. Um, I was way more of a Kobe stand back then. Like, not even really could be object- objective. I'm going to be real. <laughs> like... I was a real bad. You really wouldn't want to talk to me, bro. Because I just thought Kobe was the best thing since sliced bread. I still do, but I'm more objective now. 
But the reason why I shit on niggas now is because they lying now. They lying now. Before, like, before Kobe was, like, retired and, like, during that time, they weren't able to lie because Kobe was still playing and everything. But now they're able to lie and they're able to cherry pick and they're able to do this and do that. And that's why you have people like Two Raw, me, Dreamers Pro, um, the case for Kobe Bryant, Scap Attack, and people like us that put this type of information out because they will never put it out on TV. Like he said, anybody that's a threat to this certain person, they diminish them. Anybody. And if it look like his teammates is balling too much, i.e. Kyrie, they diminish them. And that's facts. Facts, facts. Two thousand eleven playoffs, when they were defending champions, Powell Gasol only was able to put up twelve points per game on forty two percent champions. Powell Gasol only was two thousand eleven playoffs, when they were defending champions, Powell Gasol only was able to put up twelve points per game on forty two percent shooting and was a plus minus negative twenty three for the playoffs. And Powell was on the trading block to the Hornets that summer for Chris Paul. We all remember what happened. We all know. In 2011, we remember what happened. 12 points, bro. And they got to the second round. He I beat New Orleans. Security gig. I will work and you will sleep, you understand? This place has been shut down. He was effectively traded. But the NBA blocked the trade because they didn't want Kobe getting a top 75 player, which meant ring number six. And LeBron had zero. They wanted to push LeBron Ramon James. Sure did. You don't hear that much, do you? That's why many people feel like their trade was rescinded because the league felt like they wanted their guy, LeBron, to win that championship. Yep. The king with no ring. He was he was behind Michael Jordan as far as timeline. LeBron. Jordan won his first title in the seventh year. In LeBron's seventh year, he had, he, what was it, 2010? He hadn't even made the finals yet. His eighth year, he choked epically in the finals. So they were doing everything they could to help LeBron James. Meanwhile, LeBron has now played 20 seasons, has a 4 and 6 finals record. And it's trying to prove to everyone that, you know, that he is a winner and the GOAT with nothing but loser, longevity inflated stats from always having the ball in his hands, 75% of, of the offensive sets and only four championships that he needed tons of help to, to get just to achieve that. Not to mention the shortcomings due to his lack of fundamentals and lack of shooting game. Some people may not like Kobe and didn't see him play, but as soon as you put on that Kobe video, you will say that in no way in hell is LeBron on the same level offensively as Kobe. And that was the reason Michael Jordan passed the torch to Kobe. Talk that talk too well. One last note. Kobe was drafted in 1996 and played with all the great 90s players and then all the great early 2000 players. So Kobe seen the best and played with some of the best, unlike LeBron, who has played most of his career in a no-touch AAU era and getting beat by Plummer and sewer worker Euros. Yep. That's what they don't want you to know about Kobe being Brian. And that's facts. That's what they don't want you to know about this dude right here. This dude right here. Let me show y'all something. Damn. Sometimes I think there's something missing. Like I. They don't want y'all to know.
They don't. Him. Right here. Kobe. Him. That's what they don't want y'all to know about. Everything Terrell said was facts. I'm out. Peace.